Today is a great, wonderful, amazing, incredible day, and I'll tell you why, because it's a Sweden day. The weirdest car culture in Sweden. Without further ado, let's get into this reaction, let's go. Ever since the 1960s, there's been an infamous subculture in Sweden that centers around old American cars. These people- I love this one, sorry. Let me go the back. subculture in Sweden <laughs> that centers around old American I swear when American I was a kid, cars. when I was a kid, I had one of these cars. Like, they're like the Hot Wheels. Do you remember Hot Wheels? I don't know if in Finland you had Hot Wheels. I used to have this exact car in a toy as a kid and I loved it. It was my favorite car, the Hot Wheels car. Sick, so good. Cars. These people are often ridiculed and satirized, but that doesn't seem to stop these Ooh. car enthusiasts from exp That's a sh expressing that's their love of American cars and American culture. Today, I'm gonna have a look at Vesterås Summer Meet, one of the biggest car meets in Sweden. And I'm also gonna dive into the history and the future of the subculture called Raggare. So you guys are into American cars and American culture. That's very interesting for a European nation. You know, because like, as, as Euro European countries, we always take the, take the mick of it, um, <laughs> take the piss, uh, uh, you know, with America and just um, how Americans are. But you obviously have a respect for certain parts of their culture. Because if you lo if you love American cars and American culture, what else do you love in America? Let's have a look. In 1984, a car cruising event called Power Meet started in the town of Westeros in Sweden. Thousands and later tens of thousands of people flocked to Vesteros to show off their old American cars and to get drunk. Pa I'm gonna start again because I feel like I said Finland and why would I say Finland? <coughs> Let's start again. Should we start again? I just feel like I said Finland. I had Finland in my head. I don't know why. Anyways. Ever since the 1960s, there's been an infamous subculture in Sweden that centers around old American cars. I love American cars. Speaking of American cars, I literally, I definitely had this car as a, do you remember Hot Wheels? Did you have Hot Wheels in Sweden? Like, you know those little toy cars that you had as a kid? I love this car. I had this car and I used to drive it around all the time, drive it around, play with it all the time, like the toy car. Sick. So good. Cars. These people are often ridiculed and satirized, but that doesn't seem to stop Ooh. these car enthusiasts from expressing their love of American cars and American culture. Today American I'm gonna culture. have a look at Vesterås Summer Meet, one of the biggest car meets in Sweden. And I'm also gonna dive into the history and the future of the subculture called Raggare. Raggare. Um, I'm very surprised, Sweden. I'm very surprised that you're, I'm not, not that you're into cars because cars, that's a universal language. Like we love cars everywhere. <laughs> I, don't know if it, I don't know if there is a country that doesn't like cars. However, um, you, I'm surprised at the, the American culture part. He, he just spoke like the American culture is very important in Sweden. And I don't know, as European nations, we tend to take the piss out of America. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious to find out what else in terms of American culture you guys are really into or you really enjoy. Hmm, let's see. I'm surprised. In 1984, a car cruising event called Power Meet started in the town of Vesterås in Sweden. Thousands and later tens of thousands of people flocked to Vesterås to show off their old American cars and to get drunk. Power Meet was actually the continuation of an event that started in 1978, but ever since 1984, it was held annually in Vesterås. At first, the local municipality was a co-arranger of the event, but things changed in the beginning of the 2000s. What is that? <laughs> that looks like the entire bottom end would be scraping against the ground. There's like an inch between the ground and like 
the 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 base of the car. Thousands. The number of visitors Most exploded, expensive. and the number of complaints against the car meet exploded as well. This is a very family-friendly event, but Ragare isn't always known for being calm and quiet. Quite the opposite, actually. The municipality pulled out of the event, and they started to impose stricter and stricter requirements on the arranger of power meets, a man called Shell Gustafsson. Shell Gustafsson was also robbed of a large sum of money, more than a million Swedish krona, when he was transporting money from Power Meet 2016. After that, Shell Gustafsson shut down Power Meet in Vesteros, and that made many people unhappy. This was the start of a conflict between Power Meet and what would become Vesteros Summer Meet. So he had some problems at the beginning. I wonder why, because it's only a car event. Why would you have an issue with someone putting on a car event? Unless there was some controversy dur like, during that time. Maybe it was a bit rowdy initially. Maybe these events weren't so peaceful. Maybe like there was a lot of drinking and a lot of um, antisocial behavior. I wonder why it was, it was, you know, he had a bit of friction trying to get it off the ground. A man called Klaus Brink decided that that wasn't going to be the end of Power Meet. He announced that there would be an event in Vesteros in 2017. This led to a heated discussion between Shell and Klaus, and Shell pointed out that he owned the trademark to Power Meet, so Klaus could expect a letter from his lawyer. Shell also criticized Klaus for being too inexperienced and that he wouldn't be able to handle such a massive event. There was a large okay. debate about what would happen in 2017. Would Klaus arrange a new car meetup or would Shell arrange Power Meet in Vesteros after all? In the end, Klaus Brink's new event ended up being called Vesteros Summer Meet and Shell Gustafsson moved Power Meet to the town of Leeds Shopping. And both ah. of these events have coexisted ever since then. Power Meet in Lead Shopping is sometimes called the biggest car meetup in the world, with more than 20,000 cars. Vesteros Summer Meet is pretty new in comparison, and it did get a rocky start, but it still attracts around 100,000 visitors. Wow. There's also a lot of other car meetups in Sweden. People love car shows though, car meetups and car shows. In Thailand, they have car meetups. Um, I never got, I never went to one myself, but I watched a video of like them doing one in like a, 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 like a not abandoned, but like a car park, and there was like a car meet up there. So it's it's a it's a phenomenon that's like popular all around the world. In Sweden, American Car Show in Nortelje and Classic Car Week in Rättvik, for example, ah. and many more. Some of the meetups are more aimed at collectors, and some are aimed at specific brands or models. And some are aimed at people who want to show off their cars while playing misogynic music, get drunk, and harass women. You see, ah. Raggeri is a bit of a weird subculture. It can refer to very serious collectors of classic cars, and it can also refer to the Swedish equivalent of hillbillies. Let's dive ah. a bit more into the history of Raggeri. So there is some antisocial things going on sometimes at these events. And there's certain types of people that actually collect these cars. Not everybody, but maybe it does attract a certain crowd. I get it. In the post-World War II era, the Marshall Plan was doing wonders for Europe. The US- Sorry, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, before he continues, I'm really confused. I'm finding this very weird. This, actually the title is correct. The weirdest car culture in Sweden. It's weird. I'm seeing American flags everywhere. There was a girl walking just a minute ago, a frame, I don't know if I can get to it, but there was a woman and she was walking with an American flag draped over her back. And seeing a European person do that, I've, it's confusing. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, we take the piss out of America and it's just like weird to see a European country have an event like this where you basically celebrate American culture. But then you do have kind of a link to America. You do have a link to America and one of your most popular TV shows, actually maybe it's not that weird, one of your most popular TV shows, Alfa Swaria, that, that 
it's it's in America, right? It's the one. Oh, it's in Sweden. But all the contestants, all the main cast, they're Amer- they're American. So actually, maybe Sweden, you like Americans more than you let on. <laughs> maybe you do. Maybe there is a little weird hush hush kind of obsession with America. Mm. Post World War II era, the Marshall Plan was doing wonders for Europe. The US helped Europe rebuild economically, and as a consequence, there was a lot of American influence on European countries, mm. including Sweden. Well, you know what? Actually, when he says it like that, you know, post war, a lot of American culture influence on Europe. If We don't want to be honest and say that we have a lot of American influence, but actually the Brits, we have... (laughs) Most of our media is American. I would say... I would say at least 60%. I'd say we have more more American media than we have of British media in the sense of music. The majority of our music is American. The majority of our television programmes are... uh, Well, half of our television programmes are American movies practically all our movies are american movies i'd say a hundred percent nearly 90 percent of our movies are hollywood movies american movies so yeah we are more americanized than we let on and also then food wise as well we have a lot of american chains yeah we're pretty americanized actually britain's pretty americanized obviously we have a strong culture and identity that, you know, we, we, you know, like to show off. But, yeah, we're also very Americanized. But I'm not sure if we have an event quite like this, with American flags flying and all. I don't know. I don't know. That might be you, Sweden. The US was seen as a place of hope, dreams, and forward thinking, and young people in Sweden happily adopted American culture. That included clothes, cars, music, and a lot more. The problem is that Sweden was quite a conservative country in the 1950s, and these young people who imported the greaser lifestyle from the US were diametrically opposed to Swedish values. These Swedish greasers became known as raggare. Rag is the Swedish word for bristle, but it's also slang for picking up girls. Some believe that Raggare got their name because of their rugged appearance, and some believe it's because they aggressively chased women in the same manner as American greasers. Wow. Raggare okay. drank a lot of booze, they fought, and they had a lot of random sex. Something that's very common these days, but back then it was quite anti-Swedish. They didn't want these loud and obnoxious kids around their small Swedish towns. And that's a sentiment that lived on past the 1950s. Raggare became synonymous with rough around the edges people who drink too much and behave indecently. It's a subculture that started out extremely modern. They imported the latest American trends and the latest American cars. And then they sort of remained in that mindset with the same culture and the same cars. And that culture might have been extremely forward-thinking and modern in the 1950s, but as Sweden became more and more progressive, it didn't really keep up. Interesting, so at the time, in the 1950s, it was the hit, the, the, the current, the coolest thing, whereas it's just kind of frozen in the 1950s and hasn't moved on with the times. That's really interesting. So now it's this now retro thing, retro thing. Um, let me know in the comment section if this attracts a certain demographic in Sweden. How do you see it as a Swede? Uh, do you because I know what it's like, like in the UK, you know, British people judge other British people and say, Oh, they're that, that kind of people, or they're those type, types of people. Oh, I don't do that, you know. Is it is it seen? Is it looked down upon? Is it looked down upon in society? Do you still look at people that go to these events as being like maybe unruly, being a bit antisocial, or like let, let me know how you see it? Or do you see it as a positive thing? Like it's a really great show and it's really positive for Sweden and it's a great event. Let me know in the comment section. <laughs> Ah. 
I'm not a connoisseur when it comes to American cars or any cars at all, actually. <laughs> but the people at this sure. event certainly are. I know that Chevrolet is a classic brand, though, and has some of the most popular cars. And there's also a lot of Pontiacs Whoa, and- Oh, look at that. What is that? What a bizarre looking car. I love that it has those, um, those pop-up lights, the lights that go up like that. When I was a kid in the 90s, I, those were like the cars you wanted. I remember my uncle had one of these, like not this one, but a car, a red car that had the lights that popped up. It just looked like the sickest thing ever. And it's and Oldsmobiles and Cadillacs. And of course, you can't forget about Ford. In the 1990s, there was a Swedish TV show called Bihola, Swedish for small town, that featured two raggare called Ronny or Ragge. They had a really crappy ah. Ford that they pronounced Ford. That show was a semi-affectionate look at the raggare culture, as it had evolved from the 1950s greaser style to the raggare of the 1980s and 90s. Gone were the 1950s hairstyles and leather jackets, and instead you found a lot of blue jeans and slightly more modern American cars. It was still all American though. Even though Raggare changed over time, it seems like the American connection was quite important. The American flag, it just, I, I don't know, I'm just find it tough seeing the American flag in Sweden. <laughs> it's confusing. It's interesting. Is that a British flag? on the back of that one, huh? Ronny and Ragge was many people's introduction to Raggare, and they also helped popularize the subculture. By that time, Raggare had been in Sweden for more than 30 years, and the definition of the word had started to change. These days, Raggare can refer to car enthusiasts who strictly deal with old American cars. But it can also refer to people who like to drink and fight and burn rubber out in the Swedish countryside. <laughs> Some areas of Sweden are more infested, sorry, I mean populated by Ragare than others. Like more infested. map again. Ma make 1951 great again. <laughs> That's so funny. Make 1851 great again. Farmers. Students on bikes, arrogant and self-centered. Wait, where's Stockholm? Stockholm, arrogant. And, Stockholm's there, isn't it? <laughs> arrogant and self-centered. Couldn't afford Stockholm. <laughs> That's funny. This is really funny. Jerusalem. <laughs> oh, God. This is funny. Infested. Sorry, I mean populated by raggare than others like Värmland, Dalarna and Helsingland, for example. And all of those places are pretty rural. That's where people tinker with old cars, where they meet and hang out, and where this modern take on the subculture is especially strong. Raggare often listen to rockabilly and music from the 1950s, but the music can also be more modern. Epadunk is a music genre that became popular in Sweden around 2020, and the music features heavy bass and lyrics about sex and alcohol. Which all modern music does come to think of it, but these songs are a lot more explicit. And speaking of music, there's someone in particular that I need to mention when talking about raggare and music. You can't really talk about Swedish raggare without talking about Errol Norstedt, better known as Eddie Medusa. Eddie Medusa was a composer who did rockabilly songs and a lot more. His songs were most of the time obscene and humorous, but also political and sometimes strangely poetic. He's most famous for his own songs, but he also wrote songs for other pop bands in Sweden. Eddie Medusa died in 2002 at the age of 53, but his songs are still played. That's so young. That is young. Rest in peace. Eddie Medusa then. Very rest in peace. 2002, 53. 
today who hasn't heard classic songs like Volvo, Trujibal and Mera Brenvin. These songs portray such themes as drinking, masturbating and being overtaken by a bloody Volvo when driving in your classic American car. <laughs> One of his songs is called Punjada, Bloody Punks, because in Sweden, punks and raggare are traditional enemies, which can also be illustrated by the Swedish punk band Rude Kids, who made a song called Raggare is a bunch of eloquence wow living these subcultures so punks in sweden uh were rivals with the ragare if i said that correctly um wow okay it's like that pretty much sums up That's many people's opinion about ragare I don't know if I painted a fair picture of Raggare or not, because it's a pretty complex subculture. It's full of love for American cars and American culture, but it's also filled with a lot of anti-establishment themes. It's rooted in the 1950s, but it's also adopted and adapted modern trends. It's beloved by some and hated and ridiculed by others. I'm uh, sure that- That's the question I asked. Uh, is it, yeah. So it's very, um polarizing then as a as a as a subculture in sweden so some people love it and some people hate it let me know in the comment section if you love it or hate just it. just like with any other subculture it's full of many different types of people people who care deeply about the 50s and people who don't care about history at all and just want to look forward instead people who care deeply about the community and some people who just want to drink and fight but I suspect that one thing that's common for all the raggare is the love of freedom. Freedom from society and freedom to live their lives just the way they want. That's probably so something that was true for raggare back in the 1950s, just as it's true for raggare today. And there you have it. That was a quick look at Vesterås mm. summer meat and the Swedish subculture called raggare. So yeah, you see, you said that I like the ending. That was a good ending, um, Mr. Three Star Vagabond. Um, I love his videos. Uh, go and subscribe to him after you subscribe to me. Um, what I was going to say is, he ended it by saying it's about freedom. And I completely agree. Like, like anti-establishment and just basically like, I'm going to do what I want to do. If I want to drive around in my 1950s car and I'm wearing a leather jacket and having sex every day, I'll do that. Do you know what I mean? It's just basically that. And that's where it started in the 1950s. It was a rebellion, right? They... Probably teenagers and young, young, uh, young adults and teenagers were like, "I'm just gonna go out and I'm gonna drink and I'm gonna listen to this American music that's really controversial." And obviously, their parents are probably like, "No, you can't do that." You know, it's and it's, it makes sense that they're from the countryside because in the countryside it's a lot more conservative, a lot more repressed. Yeah, it makes complete sense. The history of this is, yeah, I get it. I get it. And it's still now a, a, a thing today. But maybe symbolically it still means rebellion. Nice. Really weird though. The American flags, I just, I still find that strange. American flags in Sweden. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for watching. Until the next one, I will see you very soon.